I'm going to actually start with a number that everybody at NHTSA knows <clears throat> by heart. In 2015, 35,092. That's the number of lives lost on our roadways in 2015. That is relevant for all of us in safety because that's like a 747 crashing every week. I bring this up for a whole year. I bring this up because if a big jumbo jet crashed, it would be in the headlines for months. If a second one did it the next week, we would close the entire airspace system, right? We would not tolerate that. And yet we accept this as the lives lost on our, for decades. And that's not just a challenge to understand it, but it's basically for us to change our culture to say that is not acceptable. When you think about it, this is really the only appropriate target for us. As safety professionals, how many people should we lose? It's zero. And scientists and engineers, how are you going to get there? How long is it going to take? Great questions to ask. But I don't care if it's intellectually, morally, et cetera. Really, the only target we should accept is not losing anybody. It's zero. Because every one of these is preventable. And we're really pushing. Crashes aren't accidents, right? It's a crash. You can prevent every one of them. We understand them more than ever before. But we need to figure out when we're going to get there and how. For pretty much 50 years, we've operated reactively. We wait for a defect to occur. Unfortunately, it's usually associated with somebody getting injured or killed. And then we do go out and figure out, were they complying? Was there a defect? How do we fix it? So that's why what you see here is this major transition over the last couple of years where we've tried to emphasize moving from reactive to a proactive safety approach. If you want to democratize safety, it means that you can not have all this new technology only as an option or only in the most expensive cars. You want to democratize safety, it's got to be available to everybody. September 11, 2015, uh, NHTSA with the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, IHS, made a challenge. 10 automakers stepped up and said, we'll talk to you about this. How do we get AEB standard in all vehicles? Said, we'll come out in January and see what we've got. Took us to March when we were able to announce 20 global automakers came together and made a commitment to make AEB standard on all vehicles by 2022. One of the big problems we have is nobody understands the lexicon. And I say this because it's been fascinating when people say, before January, the number one question anyone would ask is, so when's it going to be on the road? And about January, when the secretary announced that we'd be working on a policy, uh, what was interesting is you could say, well, it's already on the road, right? But when you think about it, people don't really understand what's here and what's coming. And it's one of the challenges. Okay, so one of the things we really need to do, all of us collectively, is start communicating and helping people understand what the difference is between a level three, where a driver still has responsibility to monitor the vehicle, the environment, et cetera, and a level five, where you really could nap or do your crossword puzzle. These are very different things. Over the last couple of years, there's been a bit of a transformation going on at NHTSA. Part of that transformation was us basically uh, using sort of three strategies that we've been focused on. How do we fix things that are broken? This is not just NHTSA. This is like general for the industry and safety. Defect recalls, behavioral programs. How do we fix what's broken? How do we pivot to the proactive safety approach that I'm talking about? And third, we got to create the future. We can't let it happen to us. We have to create it. But not only do we have to create the 30-year plan that gets us to zero, we got to own it. We have to take responsibility for that and the actions that are needed to get us there. That's really critical. There's been a lot of what I call hand-waving. We need a plan, let's talk about it, let's have a meeting. What really matters is executing. If you don't deliver on that, then it was a nice exercise, but it's not gonna really save lives or prevent those injuries. I do think there is a moment here. I think we are looking at probably the most significant change in safety on our roadways forever. I mean, uh, people want to go back 50 years or since you know, horse and buggy, it doesn't matter. I think you're looking at it. And it's not just about the technology. It's about us acknowledging where we want to be as a society, not accepting these deaths and injuries on our roadways.